Here we go. I'm good right here. Everybody, welcome to the show. It is Friday. Give it up for my good buddy Shane Wales, right over there. Hello, Shane. Hi. How you doing? I have an update for you. We have an okay. update on what? What's going on? Remember our Valentine's dinner last night? My uh, Ryan made the uh, dinner for 7:45, and I'm like, it's way too late. Yeah, because so we go like, to bed at like three, right. and then we wake up at three. Yeah. So I was like, can we go early and try and sneak in and get a seat? He's like, no, actually, we can't. And I'm like, why? The reservation was actually for eight. But he lied to me and said 7.45 because he oh. knew I'd protest. As you should. Your take? What? What was your take on that? I wasn't sure what I should do there. Uh, like, for, for real? I, I would have been like, well, we're going to White Castle or something. We're going <laughs> to a drive through I ain't eating at eight. He There's... knew me, though. If he said eight, I would have been like, no, cancel that. Oh, I so he absolutely. Knew. I can't. No. We are, I'm literally in pajamas at eight o'clock. Right. I'm not kidding. Yep. I, Did I, you have a good dinner? We had a great dinner, and I got to tell you, I got to give you guys a visual, and you're going to laugh, and that's all right, because it's absurd. Here's the visual. You ready? Yep. We went out to dinner. We came home, and uh, now here's where you're going to laugh. So we, we're, we got in a hot tub, and here we go. We brought, we brought the portable speaker out there, so we're cranking music, singing Mary Poppins music at the top of our lungs. I'm not joking. <laughs> There's a, there's a song from the new Mary Poppins called Triple, Triple Little Light Fantastic that I like dance to. I know, audience. I know. I, and I sing it really loud. So here we are in downtown, you know, in downtown Minneapolis in a hot tub, and I'm screaming Mary Poppins songs. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. It was great. Not we what had, I was expecting to hear you say. I know. Not the most romantic tune. No. But we, no. Sang, we sang, I mean, we, were, we played Aretha. We played, it, was, it, was, uh, <laughs> it was a really good night. So I hope you guys all had a really good Valentine's Day. I actually, I don't think I captured my singing, but if you follow me on Instagram, uh, and if you don't, just type in Jason Matheson. Uh, if you press my stories, I think I did make a video of the hot tub. <laughs> I really, I think I you did. You think you did? I think I did, yeah. I think How I posted much drinking it. was going yeah, on? Yeah, well, there's a little champagne, just a little bit. Okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> just type in Jason Mathis and follow me and then press my little head and then you'll see it. Uh, speaking of Valentine's Day, um, I, I, if you've never been to the show, you may not know this, but uh, one of my, I call it my favorite time of the day. You know, I do the radio show, uh, then I do this. I do our show, and then after our show's over, every day I talk to the audience. Because my feeling is, these people were nice enough to get dressed. Well, some of them are dressed, but I mean, some of them, yeah. Some of them are nude. We'll show them later. But, uh, but they're nice enough to brush their teeth and come see us. The least I can do is, uh, did they brush their teeth, Aaron? Or what are you telling me? Okay. The least I could do is spend a few minutes with the folks after the show. And I love it. We do a Q&A. People can ask me anything. Well, there's, I got word from Aaron Schwabarini that there was a, a woman in the audience who didn't, it hasn't had a good Valentine's Day. I guess her, her what was it, her ex-husband, Aaron, or something? Yeah, it was her ex. Yeah, they did. The ex-husband didn't believe in Valentine's Day. Never. That's never, why he's an ex-husband. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> never gave her anything but she came here and I'm like well, we got to cheer her up so we rolled a little camera on what happened after the show look at this out that someone in the audience has not had uh, not always had like a, a great Valentine's Day so we wanted to do something so Leslie <laughs> we hear we hear that Valentine's Day always hasn't been a great holiday for you so we're gonna give you these flowers Aww. there we go there we go yeah so here's the flowers little dinner so yeah it was a, she was a sweetheart yeah so we took she's I just want a picture I'm like well that is the least I can do so <laughs> Leslie if you're watching I love you sweetheart and a happy Valentine's Day okay that was yesterday let's get to today it's time for the hot dish here we go <laughs> this is really dirty I don't know why I put this in my mouth 
Yesterday, we showed you a clip of J-Lo uh, talking about what Alex Rodriguez got to her for their first Valentine's Day. Well, it is nothing, nothing compared to what Kanye West did for Kim Kardashian. Look at this. Kenny G, that's Kenny G, that's really Kenny G. Bold choice. In a room filled with roses. Now, <laughs> the internet could not take this. I think, I, think, I think the internet shut down yesterday. Look at this exchange. Uh, Kristen asks, how is he gonna get out of there? <laughs> Caleb responds, he's not, they bought him. And that's, and that's Kenny's home until he expires. <laughs> Chrissy Teigen wondered if he had to stand there the entire time while the roses were being set up. Others wanted to know how the roses got set up in the first place, and if anyone if anyone fell, if, if one fell, would they all topple like over dominoes? like dominoes? Yeah. Well, we had questions in the office, like. Is that just an empty room in their house? Do they, they, they're so rich and they have such a big house, they just, people have great rooms, living rooms, do they just have the empty room? No, you know, you know I mean? they probably paid someone to move all the furniture out for one day. My big question is what happened when he was done? Did they talk? Did he stay for dinner? Did they sit on the couch? Did he just leave right away? Like, I mean, Kenny G? Awful? Yeah, like what happened when it was over? What, did they sit around the table and get Jimmy John's or something? <laughs> yeah. I, mean, yeah, I don't know, yeah. Don't know. Like, hey, see you later, Thanks. bye, you know. I don't know. I would get him out of there quick. You know, just like, you know, thanks, Kenny. Go. Yeah. Time to go. Next in the dish, Ben Affleck uh, visited Kimmel last night, and Jimmy asked him about all of those reports that Benny Boy is no longer going to play Batman. Look at this. You will, I've read and I've seen announcements to the effect of that you will not, re, you will not be Batman again. I am, yeah. I, I have decided to, oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. You know, I tried to, to, to direct a version of it and uh, could, worked with a really good screenwriter, but just kind of couldn't come up with a version that couldn't crack it. And so I thought it was like, you know, time to uh, let someone else take a shot at it. They got some really good people, so I'm. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, wow. Guillermo. Look at this, those, Guillermo those brought, out, brought out Ben's cape and retired it into the rafters of his studio. So they're, they're gonna, they're, there it goes, right up there. No more Ben is Batman. He was, you know, I always try to throw something into the, each show for my fellow nerds, because I'm a nerd, Shane is not. Uh, she doesn't know, Shane's never seen a comic book movie in her life. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I look, ben, ben was an okay Batman, but I think most people would agree, you know, there's Adam West, obviously, but my favorite is either Michael Keaton or Christian Bale. You know what I mean? Either those, those are the best Batman. Did you, how would you rank the Twilight movies then? Like your, if, those are my, I'd like to talk about that more. Next in the dish, I labeled. <laughs> honestly like those movies, Shane? I was so obsessed with the book and the world that was Twilight that, yeah. Did you? But I know they're not good. I know Because there's a, the last one, they have like a vampire baby, right? There's, Named um, Esme Murphy, or is it's a little Esme. It's yeah. Ren Esme. Ren Esme, yeah. Ren Esme. I know Esme. I do this joke all the time. I know Esme. That's my girl. Mm. Kiddo, you can't quit CCO. Who's going to notice when I have a new scarf? <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's my, that's my Esme. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Didn't stop me. I still quit Channel 4. Yeah, anyway. Uh, but did you like all the movies? I mean, I told you they're not great, but I still was just so in love with the whole thing. Okay. I was a little, like, borderline obsessed. Okay. I, that's so. a, a hashtag Shane fun fact, yeah. <laughs> Next in the dish, you guys got to see this. We all like weird things. I watch a 45-year-old show. It's fine, yeah. Uh, I labeled uh, Killing Eve on Hulu uh, a best thing ever earlier this week after a lot of you told me to watch it. And now the trailer, so good. The trailer for season two has just been released. Look at this. The lights are on, but you're not home. I found Villanelle. I think I might have killed her. Congratulations. You can't sleep, you can't eat. 
There's no doubt you're in deep. Sometimes when you love someone, you do crazy things. What are you looking for? A kitchen knife. What for? Stop you with. Font on the screen is right. It has become a mini little obsession with me. The show stars Sandra O. Oh, if you guys don't know, and you know, I love to tell you good shows to watch. She's a counterintelligence officer uh, in the UK, working on her own, and she's trying to track down just a nutter butters assassin, played by this wonderful actress named Jody. Season two hits BBC America, uh, probably at the same time, Hulu on on April seventh. I am not kidding you. And this, you know, what's great about it? We have, I, we don't have time for this whole conversation, but. It's just eight episodes, everybody. It's eight. It's eight episodes. Yeah, the first season. Eight episodes, 42 minutes around each. That's what all TV show, you know, like drama should be. Nobody has time for bronchitis and nobody has time for 22 episodes anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I I think of like uh, Scandal. Remember that show? They had to fill 30 episodes a year. So you're, they're, 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 they have to go through so much plot that by the time you get to season two, season three, the show's awful. These shows, I would rather, and I think the audience is with me, as a fan, I would rather have eight episodes that are killer than 22 that are, bo- like, half of them are boring. You know what I mean? So, watch this. I think you guys will like it. Again, it's called Killing Eve. Everybody, grab another cup of coffee. We have such a good show today, and we'll be back right after this. Stay with us. Coming up, it's the story on every newscast and every website. Page Six has the latest on the twists and turns in the Jussie Smollett investigation. Then, before he hits the St. Paul Home and Landscape Show, he's here at the Jason Show. From Trading Spaces, John Gidding is here, and we might have a little surprise for him. And if he's good enough for Kathy Lee and Hoda, he's certainly good enough for us. Comedian Ben Glebe is here to end our week with some laughs. Stay right there. The Jason Show will be right back. Hi guys. Hello. What's your name? Dylan. What's your name? Zaya. How old are you? Seven and I'm about to turn eight. Oh, and you? Uh, six and this is the month of my birthday. So when you're in love, it's like when your heart is like beating so fast, you're attracted to someone that looks really beautiful. So that's what love is. Have you had that experience? Nope. You've had that experience? Yeah, it only happens to boys. It only happens to boys? Oh, girls don't fall in love? Have any boys tried to kiss you at school? No. Have anybody, has anyone tried to kiss you at school? (laughs) Are you trying to kiss her? Is that what you're doing with your lips? Mm Mm-mm, only if she comes to my house. (laughs) It's very forward. I sense that right now as I sit here, that the two of you are falling in love. Is that happening? No. To you, is it happening? Well, in my mind it is. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome back, everybody. Jimmy Kimmel celebrating Valentine's Day with the kiddos. Well, more hot dish for you today. And to help us out, we turn to the folks who know everything about everybody. Give it up for our good friend, Elizabeth from Page Six TV. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Jason, how are you? I'm well, how are you? Doing well, thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. First up, I said in the tease, this story is, I don't care what kind of show you turn on, it's everywhere. What's the latest on the Jussie Smollett investigation? So, Jason, this story, just more and more details coming out, but it seems like every detail that comes out, there's actually more questions raised. So, of course, there's a narrative that I'm sure you've seen. A lot of people on social media are saying, was this entire attack and this alleged hate crime 
all a hoax. Well, now what we know, the latest bit of information just within the last 10 minutes is that there are two men in Chicago who were identified as persons of interest. Just now, the Chicago police are calling them suspects. So they're officially suspects. Yesterday, they had a search warrant. They entered their home. They collected items. Some of the items found there were bleach because you remember that Jesse Smollett said that a chemical substance was poured on him during this alleged incident. And they also found an Empire script. So the police are saying that at least one of the men was affiliated with the show. There's reports out there uh, from local reporters in Chicago saying that both of these men were extras on the show. So they're being questioned and also Jesse Smollett is being questioned after his Good Morning America interview yesterday. Well, that, if they are extras, that would make sense because one of the questions people had was, how did they know where he would be? You know, Elizabeth, I mean, uh, if they, maybe they overheard conversations that they knew where Jesse lived when they were in production in Chicago. So that would make a little bit of sense. Exactly. I mean, this attack does seem very premeditated. They knew where he was. It was 2 a.m. on a dark, very cold night. So that would make some sense. But now there's also a rumor out there that the whole reason that Jesse could have made this up is because he was being written off the show. Well, Fox slammed back at that and they said that's completely ridiculous. They stand by him. And actually, the writers of Empire, they have their own Twitter account and they said there's never been one discussion to write Jesse off the show. This is completely insane. And also the cops have said that we cannot confirm any reports that this is a hoax. So the cops are still investigating. And as I said, they did just within the last few minutes finally name those two men suspects. Uh, next, we'll turn the page and get a little happy. This is for all my millennial friends out there. Nickelodeon's bringing back some classic shows. What, what are they, Elizabeth? I am very excited about this, Jason. So Nickelodeon is going to be reviving all that. So everybody remembers all that. It started in 1994. I think the show is completely underrated. It's basically Saturday Night Live for kids. And it really put out some of the biggest comedic stars. Of course, Amanda Bynes, Kenan Thompson, Nick Cannon. Kenan Thompson is going to be an executive producer. And Nickelodeon has said that some of the original cast members will appear on the show. I wouldn't be surprised if Nick Cannon and Kenan showed up also, maybe Kel. We all remember Keenan and Kel, so details will still be coming out there. But last week when Nick Cannon hosted the Wendy show, when he was into guest host for Wendy on Fox, uh, Keenan came on the show and they actually were talking about all that. So I think that was maybe drumming up some attention for this revival. Just a little bit. Elizabeth, have a good weekend. Thank you so much. You too, Jason. Page 6 TV, check your local listings. The, the show for my generation, again, I'm 44, on Nickelodeon is you can't do that on television yeah. uh, with Alanis Morissette. That's the show that I think started the whole slime thing. If you said, I don't know, anytime during the show, green slime would uh, would fall on you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, they really thought of everything if that happened. Still ahead, everybody. More dish. Courtney Cox is going all natural. I'll tell you what I'm talking about. And then home remodeling pro and trading spaces star John Gidding is in the house and talking about the do's and don'ts of the wall art. We'll be right back, everybody. Back after this. I love you guys. <laughs> Y'all really wanted to see those hot tub pictures. Did you guys think there was nudity? Because my, no, because I went back, I looked at my phone, my Instagram followers had a big jump in the, the last half hour. And search for Jason Matheson. There's no nudity. It's just, believe me, you don't want to see this. Our half hour, but you know, actually, I'm glad that I said that because uh, our half hour hot dish continues. We're going to call this our body positive segment because listen, yeah, 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 because. There are, there are two stories that I think you're going to like. Because you know we, we don't, you know our show, our kind of mantra. We don't do fat jokes on this show. I don't like skinny jokes because skinny shaming is just as worse as fat shaming. And I love these two stories. First up, Courtney Cox. Courtney Cox is over. She's done getting work done on her face. The Yay. former friend star says, yeah. The former, and look at this picture. This is, this is the like natural picture. She says that uh, it's been two years 
since she had injectable fillers that uh, dissolve in, from her face. She had them dissolve. She just you know, let them go. She says she started using the fillers because she wasn't pleased with how she looked, how she was aging. But then she realized that with all that stuff, she wasn't looking like herself anymore. She wasn't, she wasn't looking like Monica. So, Courtney went, went on Instagram and she says now she is embracing getting older and is at the stage in her life where she is just comfortable being herself. I, I don't think, look, I'm not going to be sitting all up here hypocritical. I've had, you know, I've done stuff just over the years, like anyway, but she doesn't need it. Did you see that picture? She so looks, she's like one of the most naturally beautiful people and she was starting to look different and I hated that. We want Dancing in the Dark, Courtney Cox. Yeah. And good for her or for Monica being- Or Monica season four. Or, or that yeah, one, yeah, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. And props to her for admitting that she was having work done because a lot of people like lie about it when you're like, no, clearly, clearly. you had some stuff done. Clearly. She's not as beautiful as you are though. Jason, that is yeah. not, she is like- I really do. I think I- top. No, no, you're right up there. Next to the dish. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Well, I was mean to her yet. We were fighting all day yesterday. <laughs> she was true. She was bitter Betty yesterday for Valentine's Day, yeah. Uh, you also like this next story. Uh, singer Sam Smith is opening up about his struggles with body image. On Instagram, he said, now look at this photo, everybody. This is what he posted. I, this is my favorite story of the week, I think. On Instagram, he said, if he ever had to do a photo shoot with his shirt off, he would starve himself for weeks and then nitpick every single photo, every pose. He says he's decided to fight back and embrace his body just the way that it is. And that is the way that it is right now. I love this. That. Yeah. I, think, I think this is great because not just for, you know, people think, and uh, it's not true, when people think of um, uh, body image issues, they, they think it's predominantly women, and it is. I mean, if you look at the statistics, but men struggle with it too, and I think especially too, I can relate to this because uh, especially in the gay community, and, and Sam is out, it, there's, the, there's a lot of pressure to look a certain way. I mean, everybody wants to look like Justin Timber. It's just not possible, you know what I mean? And as someone also that has struggled with, with, with weight, and I will my entire life, I, I love to see that, and I think that's such a good message because when you see people on Instagram, when you see celebrities, most young people don't know those celebrities have spent 30 minutes trying to get just the right pose to make them look yes. like that. You know what I mean? So for young people going, oh, and they, they, try to, they try to rise to this unattainable level of beauty that the stars can't even get to. I think Sam Smith's message is gonna help a lot of young boys that struggle with that. Yeah, all of us, and I know I know they're in the audience. All of us little boys, we all remember this, who did not want to take your shirt off at the beach. All of us that were afraid of our very first PE locker room experience. Oh. That was terror, <laughs> that was, that was, pull I mean like terrorizing for me. I hated seventh and eighth grade because, oh, PE, it was horrible. So Sam Smith, way to go. Still ahead. John Gidding from Trading Spaces is here, and he has some tips for your home interior, and we have a little surprise for him. And then, he's made 25 appearances on Hoda and Kathy Lee. We're chatting with comedian Bing Lib when we come back. Back after this. First guest is an interior designer and TV host. You know him from shows like Curb Appeal and HDTV, as well as TLC's hugely popular reboot of Trading Spaces. He's in town as part of the St. Paul Home and Landscape Show. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for John Gidding, everybody. Hi, John. Welcome Hi. to the show. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Have you been here? Have you been to St. Minneapolis, St. Paul? Before? Oh yes. You have. I love St. Paul. Is it a good town? Yes. It's a weird, yeah, if we do say so ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we're we're specifically talking, and I like this, I like this category. We're talking about wall art specifically. Yes. Because there are things you can do wrong with wall art that people may not get. So we're gonna take a look at some photos and kind of walk us through here, if okay. you will. Okay, so too big or too small. This is a common problem, oh, especially yes. for people who've found the piece of art that they really want in their home and they think they know which wall it's supposed to go on. But if the wall is too big and the art is too small, you need to fill around it. And if the art is too big, you need to find a new wall for it. Yeah, because I mean, that's a perfect, that, that, that chair, the green one on the left, the wrong one, 
that is there's still a lot of wall space yes, that exactly. you could fill easily. Now would you do let me let me ask you, would you possibly do like another smaller one under that one? Yeah. Would that be John acceptable? Yeah, exactly. When it's too small, you want to fill in with other art, photography, posters work. Um, I find that an an informal approach to art is almost perfect because yeah. you can treat your walls as a living, breathing reflection of your personality and style. Let's go to the next one. I think the next one is my mother. <laughs> this my mother-in-law hates this. You call it what she calls it, matchy matchy. Don't go matchy matchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you like some flowers doesn't mean we got to see flowers everywhere. <laughs> Look um, at the, that's a lot of flowers, That's a lot of John. flowers. That's Me, a lot. Meanwhile, rules are made to be broken. Um, sometimes you want to have a repetition of pattern because you're excited about the colors in the patterns or excited about the scheme, but matchy-matchy um, is never a good look. Leo, can we go back to the picture? John, let me ask you. I've heard this from, we've done countless segments like this. It, do you go with the thing too, like if we, t okay, so that picture. Yes. Are you one of those that like, you? Let, let's say the homeowner loves that picture for whatever reason. Would you then pick a color out of that photo to, to uh, kind of outline the rest of the room? What a, a prescient question, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, yes, because yes, uh, art is a really great way of defining the color scheme of a room, setting a color. For example, if you love a certain color already, you can find artworks that incorporate it. But having that vibration and that parallel of art and the colors within a room is a very powerful impact. It's a way to match but not be matchy matchy. Yes, exactly. That's a very goal. Let's look. <laughs> okay, so variety. Let's take a look at the next one, Leo. Let's pull that one up. Uh, what do we mean by variety? Okay. <laughs> Don't ooh this. <laughs> <laughs> this is my this is my example of a terrible gallery wall. Um, yeah. And I'll tell you why. Okay. There are no regulating lines. Uh, this is the kind of gallery wall that I'm sometimes guilty of creating when on a daytime show they'll give me 20 minutes to do a makeover and I throw some stuff on the wall. No, the right way to do it, you're supposed to cut out pieces of paper that correspond to each piece of art and lay it out with regulating lines so it's pleasing to the eye and then hang it up. Got it. Yeah, I said it's variety. That represents bad art, y'all. That's a bad art wall. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was out of order there. No, no, it's all good. But at the same time, you know, a gallery wall is something that everybody can appreciate yeah. and try themselves because you've got photographs of your family, you've got photographs, you've got art, you've got posters. Create an assemblage that tells your story, but use regulating lines so it doesn't look like a mess. Yeah, plus you don't want a whole bunch of nails. You don't want to guess and then get it up there and then you have 40,000 nail exactly. holes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's look at the next one. I think this is, is this variety? John, <laughs> yes. Is this, okay. Yes, thank so you. So what do we need? To, yeah, thank you, Aya. <laughs> thank you, audience. So for this, you know how sometimes you'll find six pieces that, for example, are ornithological prints of birds. You don't want to put them all up in the same room because it starts looking like a science display. You want to yeah. break it up a little bit. So don't. So maybe one or two bird pictures. One John? or two yeah. with something else, and then put some other two in another place yeah. and bring some variety. Into a little it. little bird goes a long way. Yeah. That's right. What do you? Uh, so if people come down to the show and they will, because we just want to, John. We just want to get out of the house. We have been stuck in the house. Oh, yeah. So we're. So come, when we come, when come we, say hi. Yeah, when they come down to see you, what you doing? What are you going to be doing? I'm speaking once today, twice tomorrow. We're going to be talking about design and art. We'll be talking about TV, trading spaces, curb appeal. People bring their questions. So we have a good time. <laughs> yes, please come. Um, there's a lot to do. There's places for kids. There's inspiration for your patio, inspiration for your yard, your landscaping. So there's a lot to do. Do you get sick? Not of being t to talked about or being asked about curb appeal or trading spaces, but like a doctor at a, a you know a doctor at a house party when people come up, oh I got this thing right here. Do do you get sick of people always like mining you for decorating advice? You know I don't get sick because I always charge for it, <laughs> and it it takes the John? sickness right away. You know I feel great. John knows TV because that's the perfect place to go to a commercial. <laughs> Coming up, John sticking around. We're going to have a preview of the new season of Trading Spaces, plus a surprise for John that, well, it's a surprise. He has no idea what we're going to do when we come back. Back after this. <laughs> Excited, and we are too. 
That is a clip from the trailer for the upcoming <laughs> season two of the reboot of Trading Spaces featuring our guest, John Gidding. We're back with John. How is it? Uh, we were talking, uh, you're joining the legacy. I love that they, the legacy, the legacy designers. designers. Yes. You are, you are the newbie. All kidding aside, though, that show really is legendary within the, within the home TV remodeling uh, community. Wasn't it? I mean, you, you obviously know what you're doing, but was it still intimidating walking in and seeing Frank and, and Hildy? I mean, were you a little nervous? Of course. I mean, this is the, the show that started it all. It brought design television to America. I was watching it in college. I waited in line at home shows to get an autograph from Vern. Seriously? Yeah. How about, uh, how about Paige? How was she? Just a joy, a hardworking, exactly how she is on camera. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting that you said that because we have a little surprise for you. Um, I know Paige as well, and I called her up and I said, you know, John's going to be on the show tomorrow. What? Would you like to? And this is what she sent us. Look at this. Hi, John. Jason told me you were going to be on the show today. And when he, when he told me, he asked me, you know, do you like him? And I laughed so hard because, of course, actually on Trading Spaces, we all like each other. We get along really well. Nobody ever seems to believe us when we say that. No. But do I like you? Uh, yes. Um, first of all, <laughs> I told Jason he's going to want to leave his husband for you because <laughs> you are so beautiful. It's painful. You are so... You're so smart that it's stupid, and you are so nice, it's cruel. Oh, okay. And actually, the fact that the two of you are together right now in Minneapolis without me is just so far from right, and it really should be rectified. But I hope you have a great trip, and I hope you enjoy the show, and I love you very much. Bye. Mwah. Paige. She's a sweetie, isn't she? Thank you so much for that, Jason. Oh, you're welcome. That was so wonderful to hear from a little Paige cam, actually. I know. I love her. Yeah. She is just... She, and everyone really on that show is, but it was so funny because I know Paige would tell me like the real deal. So I did yesterday after the show, I called her, I go, girl, I said, John's on the show tomorrow. Do you like him? Like, because I want you to send a message. She goes, I love him. Well, she actually said a curse word in the message in front of the, it was funny. I played the, I played the message and we had a, this, a full audience yesterday and she goes, I blank and love him. And I'm like, oh, Paige, I love you. But yeah, so it's been, you've enjoyed very the much. experience of working on. You know, what's very interesting for me is, and I hate to like break the hearts of your viewership here, but on television, we sometimes fake things. Yeah. Oh, please. They, yeah. It's true. And when I started on Trading Spaces, I thought, okay, you know, it's a budget, quote unquote. But no, it's real. It, and Paige is what keeps us on the straight and narrow. Yeah. And when we go over, she actually will say, okay, so what are we returning in this room? And it's not for TV. No. She will actually make you there take back. There won't be cameras there. She'll be like, no, 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 we, we, we do this correct. Did you, because uh, you, had, you, had you have one episode last year or two? I had one. Okay, did you go over last year? Yes. How much did you go over? $47. Why did you do that, John? What did you buy? Oh. <laughs> Why did you go over? We gave a, a lamp back. I mean, I wasn't allowed to keep it. Okay, but I gotta, but do you not, are you keeping track as you go along? Like yes. You, you are. Yes. And you just if mistook people, $50. If people come. I sound like Paige now, don't I? I'm like. Well, you have to keep in mind, we overbuy so that we see oh. what works. Like we'll get two rugs to make sure one of them works and then return the other one, get the receipt. You just forgot that lamp. Yes. That's right. Give it up for John, everybody. Go see him. We all want to get out of the house. Get out of the house this way. John is part of the St. Paul Home and Landscape Show. Catch him today at 4 and tomorrow at 2 on the main stage. That's right. That's where he should be. Or head to the website below. Bloop. Uh, thank you for being here. Come Thanks back, please. Me. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. So ahead. He's been a regular on the fourth hour of today in Chelsea lately. Ben Glebe is in the house. Going to make us laugh when we come back. Back after this. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. From one great guy to another. Our next guest was named one of the funniest comedians in the business by TBS and his own stand-up special now on Amazon Prime and a hysterical show as well. Give it up for Ben Glebe, everybody. Hi, Ben. Hello, Jason. Good to see you. Thank, Thank you for being here. 
My pleasure. Have you have you played Minneapolis a lot? Have you I come Tuesdays? every year. I come every year to Minneapolis. I want to test my body's limits as far as being able to control its temperature. <laughs> I literally got in the car this morning and there were icicles on my fingers. I had to fling out the window. <laughs> yes. It made me feel good. I always like to ask because whenever a comedian visits us, because no matter, you know, when you travel the country, different audiences handle jokes differently. Mm. Do you have to curtail your uh, your you, your uh, act for us? I don't. No, I find Minnesota audiences to be great. They love jokes. They just love jokes with a strange accent, and that's it. <laughs> that's true. They, they 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 say, "Oh yeah, you were good." Yeah. That's how, yeah. That's a comp. That's a it's big a, compliment. It's a yeah. compliment. Yeah, yeah. They got a very fun accent. If I had an accent like that, I probably would never stop talking. <laughs> and we don't. I we would don't. be live streaming myself the constantly. whole time. Yeah. Talk to me about the comedy special. When you're, when you're taping it, and it's on Amazon Prime, go find it, everybody. When you're taping it, is it weird? Do you, because you're still doing your regular act in front of a regular audience. And I've, never, I've always wondered this. Is it odd? Because you're, you're filming, but yet you're still talking to these people here. It's super weird. And you have 13 cameras, and you have one shot to get it right. And it's going to live forever and be the representation of your act. And there's people paying upwards of $100,000 to produce it and it's all on your shoulder. Someone's had a heart attack in the audience. Yeah. So it is weird. It's, it's like a normal chill comedy show and then also a heart attack combined with enormous pressure of an elephant sitting on your chest. Sort of heart attack style, but other than that, it's very chill. <laughs> because when you do the show, when you do a show, like you, tonight you go out and you do the show, if you mess up something, you can come back tomorrow. But that mm -hmm. thing lives forever on Amazon. It's 100% true. It lives forever on Amazon Prime where it's available for you to watch. <laughs> um, that is very true. That is very true. But then that's why I prefer, like, I have a game show called Idiot Test. Yes, on, you do. On Netflix. And that's more fun for me to do in a way be, as far as a taping goes because I've got other You're people up there with me. I got contestants. And this is your screen clips here of, yeah. our, of, of explain, our street I, version. I love this show. Explain the concept for folks. Sure, so this is just like a little street promo that we did, but our studio, our show's in the studio. It's a brain teaser game show, huge studio audience, shiny floor game show. Two teams of two compete against each other in brain puzzles to see whose brain works better. Every second they do not answer, they lose money. And when they get tests right, they have a chance to win $10,000. And they get tests wrong, they get mercilessly made fun of by me. <laughs> so, thank you, thank you so much. So as the episodes have gone on, are we as humans smarter or dumber than you thought we were? I'm very happy to report that we're dumber. <laughs> yeah, we are definitely dumber. Show. Yes, and, uh, and that's why I'm going around the country in my Surrounded by Idiots tour yeah. to, to talk to everybody and see if we can up the intelligence a little bit. We Slow need it bit. right now. Just a little bit. I don't know if you heard, we just declared a national emergency moments ago. Mo literally right before our show right started. Right before That's your right, show, yeah. the president, I was watching in the car over, he literally said the sentence, um, so I signed the paperwork, and so I'm going to be going back inside, signing more paperwork, and then the emergency will start. So we're in it right now. He announced yeah. the emergency will begin, which is not typically how emergencies happen. Yeah. So, I mean... We're in it now. Yeah, we've yeah. got idiots everywhere, and that's why I might have an announcement at my show tomorrow. I'm at the Mall of America House of Comedy tonight through Sunday, but I might have an announcement you might want to come see on Saturday night. Saturday. Now, speaking of uh, people that you've, uh, good people, Kathy Lee and Hoda. Yes. Is this true? You've been with them 20 Five times? I have indeed. What? Okay. My liver still has not recovered. <laughs> what people I know, this is a, a lame question, but they really are both delightful. I've met Kathy Lee a few times at the Mall of America. Wonderful. Aren't they? Ju they're just delightful people. Like truly wonderful human beings because off camera, they're as nice as on camera. That's the ultimate test. Literally just chatting in the halls about our, each other's lives. They would always ask about if I'm dating somebody, how my love life is. They, get, they were very happy for me when I found love. And then when, I, when that ended, they avoided the topic. They're genuinely, <laughs> genuinely, <laughs> genuine, lovely people. Do they really avoid it? Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, we won't ask. Uh, yeah, they don't want to rub the poor salt in the wound. But then when the cameras turn back on, Kathy Lee does not shy away from pouring salt on wounds. Really? Off camera, very sweet, but Kathy Lee loves to needle a little bit. That's, uh -huh. what she, you know, that's why Regis had you know, several heart attacks also. <laughs> uh, you're, you're here tonight, you're here tomorrow, and again, Saturday. So if we're going to go to the show, 
you're, 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 you're gearing us towards Saturday. Saturday, 8 o'clock, there will be a special announcement, but then I will be also uh, talking about that Saturday Late Show and Sunday Late Show as well. Uh, but tonight you can just see my regular show, and it might be the last show of the Surrounded by Idiots tour, and something might be different starting Saturday. Okay. And you're all over, you are all over streaming. I mean, no matter what streaming thing you go to, you're there. Amazon Prime, and you're on the Netflix. And the Netflix. I'm on the Hulu in some way. I don't yeah. know how, but something I did is on, on Hulu. I'm on my own Instagram live all the time. Uh, people are getting too much of me. and I'm, They're saying stop. And we, I don't listen. We are not. Please come back. That's ben, kind everybody, of say that. this weekend. <laughs> what, uh, I love the House of Comedy at the Mall of America. Head to moa.houseofcomedy.net. Remember, Saturday. And don't forget, you can watch, speaking of streaming, we're all over the place, too. You can watch full episodes of our show on our brand new YouTube channel. We post each day's episode along with clips from the show uh, around 1.30 or 2 that day to search for The Jason Show. We're America be- needs it. Thank you, buddy. You're welcome. We're going to wrap things up when we come back. Stay with us. That was so much fun. Thank you so much. What a pleasure. Thank you. I got you know, Shane and I basically tell you everything. We're a full disclosure show. If something goes wrong, we tell you. If a light goes out, we tell you. I got to just admit something that I've never revealed on a show before. I always get, no, you, you guys will understand. I always get nervous when we have a comedian. And Ben was great, but you know what I'm going to say. Yeah. When a comedian starts to make a political joke, I get so nervous <laughs> because I think to myself, you're clenching. You're like, I don't want the emails. I don't, you know what I mean? <laughs> don't go political. We don't go political. Don't so laugh please, too hard. Don't, I don't not laugh. You see my face? I'm just like, ah, don't mention the president. Please, please don't mention the president. Please. So please, all of you out there, I didn't laugh. I just smiled. Just politely, don't email me. Don't I'm ruin having, his Friday. I know, I'm having a really don't good Friday. Friday. Shane, yeah, please. I already, I already made people mad on the radio show, so it's fine. Anyway, what uh, you had a fun Friday though. Show folks, what, 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 where, where were okay, you? Okay, this is awesome. The Science Museum of Minnesota. They just opened a new exhibit. It's a video game exhibit, so it has like the history of video games and the future. But they have like a full arcade. There's hundreds of games. No tokens needed, so you can play all your like old favorites, like Pac-Man. I think you said was yours. Yeah. They Miss, have, Miss Pac-Man was really oh, what I excelled at. I don't yeah. think they had that one. Okay. Sorry. That's fine. Pac-Man's um, good. But they yeah. have Sims, which is like my favorite, and they had Dance Center. Central, you know, Dance Dance Revolution. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a good time. It was really fun. It's, so it's open now. It's open right now. Uh, yep, it opened at 930, and it runs through May, so you have plenty of time. Plenty of time. And again, we need to get out of the house. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be cold, but we just, aren't we, I just, I need to, we need to get out and just, we've been, We yeah. sure do. Well, if you saw the show yesterday, and we, a lot of you did, because we got great emails. Here, look at this, this is a clip from it. You heard the story of a local couple, Mark and Heather. Mark turned a chance meeting with me in 2011 into an opportunity to impress a girl that he had a crush on. And after that picture was taken, they ended up falling in love, and they are now engaged. Well, yeah, it was. Stop the cuteness. It was the sweetest. I thought about them all day long because they really were the sweet. I mean, look how sweet they were. And what people didn't see, what people didn't see off uh, on camera was Mark was so sweet to her. He was like adjusting her shirt to make sure she wasn't wrinkled. And he, he took such good, yeah, it was very caring. Well, you all love. Hold on, you gotta. Thanks, girl. Thanks. <laughs> this hair hasn't moved since 1996. Are you kidding me? Uh, uh, you all love their story as well. Sherry on Instagram said, best Valentine's Day love story. Thank you, Sherry. Christopher Straub, our good friend. Ooh. He was watching. This is the cutest ever. Thank you, Strauby. Aww. And Sue said, we all need to see pictures and hear about this June wedding. Oh, no. Yeah. Believe me. Let me tell you. We're we are. Co- oh. I hope, I hope the family's not watching because just know. We are up to something. We are up to something for that wedding. I'm telling. I told the story this morning on the radio because Alexis, my co-host, was with me that yep. day. And Lex goes, "Should we crash the wedding?" And I go, "Absolutely." Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're invited. I don't think it's I, I, I think when you're invited, yeah. it really isn't no, crashing. Not. No, no. Hey, by the way, like I said, we're hopefully uh, going to have better weather, weather next week. We understand a lot of you had to cancel this week, so we have open seats next week. Please come back and see us, all of you that had to cancel. If you want tickets to our show. Go to our Facebook page, click the ticket tab, takes you like one minute. You're in at 9.30 and you're out by 11.15, so please come see us. And it's free. People always think we charge you. 
It's free, yeah. Monday, Monday, I'm getting my bacon on at baking on at the Way Cool <laughs> Cooking School. See if I can recreate something from the Great British Bake Off. That's Monday. But right now, that's going to do it for us. If you're a kid watching that's being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.